is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 nissan altima courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because this is a very popular sedan from nissan all-wheel drive is available as well which is another big selling point to this one because not every sedan can say that and as far as the new features go for 2024 I'll just get it out of the way up front here. Nissan Connect Services now comes with a three-year free trial as opposed to the six-month free trial that it came with for the 2023 model year. Essentially what that is is you download the My Nissan app, then you can lock and unlock your car from the app. You have emergency calling available and vehicle health reports, things like that. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Altima first one being the one we are in today being the S trim level yes we got another bottom trim level I know you guys love those but $25,730 that one starts out which is a $440 bump from the 2023 model year SV for $26,530 SR for $27,930 SL for $32,430 and lastly the SRVC Turbo for $35,000 thousand four hundred and thirty dollars and so for all trim levels but that vc turbo front wheel drive comes standard but all wheel drive is available again with the exception of the vc turbo if you wanted to add that simply add fifteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but so you can imagine with all these trim levels there are two different power plants available for the altima first one belonging to all trims but the vc turbo that one is powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 188 horsepower for the front wheel drive 182 horsepower for the all-wheel drive 180 pound feet of torque for the front wheel drive 178 then for the all-wheel drive sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT 0 to 60 time actually kind of respectable at 7.4 seconds so no issues there on paper at least we'll test that out in a little bit here but MPG numbers then coming in at 27 in the city 39 on the highway for the front wheel drive 26 city 36 on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then you have that other power plant of course belonging to the VC turbo that one is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 248 horsepower at 5600 rpm 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters for that one zero to 60 time approximately 5.8 seconds is substantially quicker there with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 34 on the highway taking regular fuel with a slight power loss but those numbers are achieved using premium fuel i just want to put it that way so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the altima i did want to mention to you guys the drive mode it is singular it is a sport driving mode it's not labeled sport it's simply a horizontal button on the actual shifter when you press that it actually does show an s up on the uh, digital portion of the gauges so signifying you are in that sport driving mode so anyways had to mention that first so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the uh, acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Altima here up to speed all right so we are in that sport driving mode and i think this is going to be our somewhat of a straightaway go baby <laughs> okay too fast for this curvy of a road but it's okay yeah it's certainly what i expected the ultima to accelerate like it's not the very quickest thing in the world but if you did want quicker that's what the vc turbo is for but having said that it's pretty much on par for the course when you compare it to the competition so it's perfectly fine for what this vehicle is i'm just going to put it that way but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front disc in the back 11.5 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to commit a very respectable 120 feet why do i put it that way because essentially anything the one teens is sports sedan good anything in the mid 120s is average 130s is uh not so great and uh this one comes in very close to that sports sedan number so i would say it is perfectly fine as far as that braking feel goes as i just pulled up to this red light here immediately brings it to a stop it's kind of just average as far as braking feel goes it's not on the firm side it's definitely not a soft braking feel either so it's perfectly fine for what the Altima is. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, but you do also get a sport tuned suspension for the SR trim levels only. So it's gonna give you a little 
more firmer of a ride. I will say that because I reviewed that one last year. But if you wanted that better handling, a little more sporty of a suspension, that's how you're gonna go ahead and get it. But having said that, I can tell the difference. I remember that ride quality last year. This one is a heck of a lot better than driving the SR in terms of ride comfort. So definitely absorbing the road of perfections a heck of a lot better in our S trim level than it did last year in the SR. And that's due not just because of the suspension, but the uh, larger wheel size as well. We got smaller wheels obviously in the S trim level. So if you value ride quality, the S trim level may be a better bet for you. I'm just saying as far as steering feel goes, it's been perfectly fine. It's weighted pretty much average again, not a super heavy steering feel, but not a loosey goosey one like an SUV would have either. So that's been perfectly fine. As far as cab noise goes, as you guys can tell, as we're going zero miles per hour there isn't a heck of a lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin but honestly when we're driving there i didn't have any issues there not a lot of wind noise either so that's been perfectly fine and touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back and sedans shaped like this you're definitely not going to have any issues there but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 nissan altima all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 nissan altima finished in glacier white in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name on this one but as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the bin first character is the number one indicating that the altima is built and assembled here in the u.s so gotta love that so let's go ahead and start up front chrome v motion front grille is going to come standard on all trim levels but the sr because that sr is going to give you a black v motion front grille and that's for both sr trim levels by the way active grille shutters do come standard so essentially what that is is the grille shutters are going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time so i like that sr badge can be found on the front grille for the sr trim levels we obviously don't have that one this year so can't show that to you guys this time but led headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board even our s trim level so added illumination at night what's even better about those headlights as i'll get up a little closer here for you guys is they are projector led headlights as opposed to the reflector led headlights the projectors are always going to illuminate a little bit better than the reflectors so again added illumination at night but automatic feature of course coming standard along with automatic high beams so what that is is when you have your high beams on at night and the sense of the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you then so definitely very convenient feature there as well but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right and so now since we are around to the side of this one chrome belt line molding does come standard for all trim levels across the board got that floating roof line towards the back meeting a separation between the roof line and the rest of the body so i think that's a nice little design element there body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the sv trim level and up otherwise you're going to get these matte black side mirrors for the s and then gloss black side mirrors actually for the sr trims and if you wanted led integrated turn signals within those side mirrors go with the sl or the vc turbo trim levels but i do like the chrome door handles as well on our s trim level and that's for all trim levels yet again and that goes along nicely with the chrome belt line molding of course take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming on our s trim level 17 inch machine finished alloy for the SV and the 19 inch machine finished alloys for the SL and the SR trim levels of course varying in design but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way around to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one no shark fin antenna no kind of antenna whatsoever found on the roof line that is an interesting little element there you don't see that too often rear spoiler for the SR trim levels honestly I think it looks perfectly fine without it though body colored or gloss black rear to Diffuser. you guys can see that down below so even for our s trim level you still have a rear diffuser and it is body colored as well so i think it looks pretty darn good down there you do have some uh like the video lettering found in the upper left corner there just above that tail light and uh, also go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already i've been doing this for nine years i like to review every new car that i can get my hands on so if you do appreciate new car reviews go ahead and hit subscribe and then just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets tucked away and if you go with the sr trims they're going to have chrome tips but Anyways, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next then. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Altima, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there actually isn't a button on the trunk itself, at least for our S trim level, but there is a button on the key fob and there's a button by the driver's side left knee. So either one of those is perfectly fine. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there. There are some grocery bag hooks and a ton of them. So it, you could probably fit grocery bag hooks on each of these upper kind of hooks, but there's also little hooks that kind of double as tie down anchors and uh, they're found towards the actual trunk itself as well. So you got plenty of grocery bag hooks back there, which I absolutely love. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fex the flat which you guys know i personally prefer but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 35.2 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there there is rear ventilation for the s l and vc turbo trim levels but we don't have it today of course since we have the s rear charging ports for the sv trim level and up and then a rear center armrest with cup holders though that is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board so i am glad at least we got that one this time but then take a look at the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating for the s trim level eight-way power driver seat for the sv and up sport cloth for the sr trims four-way power lumbar for the sl and vc turbo leather seating for the sl l meaning leather of course and then heated front seats for the sl and vc turbo but honestly for our manually adjustable seats they have been perfectly fine if i'm being honest they really aren't that bad obviously with power adjustable seats you got a little more leeway to really find your best dri driving position but even with these manually adjustable seats i've been perfectly fine so far but then take a look at the steering wheel this is one of my favorite parts i'll tell you why in a second it is tilt but it is heck of a lot of telescoping so that means taller individuals would be a lot more comfortable in this vehicle as opposed to most other vehicles that i test drive i'm six foot tall like i keep saying and the steering wheel definitely telescopes out a good bit which typically leads to more comfort for taller individuals i'm just saying there but it is heated for the sl and vc turbo and then leather wrapped for the sr trim level and up but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your nissan logo at the top got the lock unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there but the circular button that's going to be a remote start which by the way comes standard on every trim level across the board gotta love that and then keyless entry with the push button start also coming standard for all trims so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter and so once started up tachometers all the way to your left speedometers on your right there is a digital display front and center and you can control that using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel it's going to give you things like outside temperature time of day there's a digital speed readout up there as well how many miles you have left until you hit empty of course trip a trip b basically everything you could possibly need at least on the digital portion of the gauges there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality and let me start with overhead sunglass sort of comes standard for every trim level across the board if you wanted a power moonroof though that comes standard on the sl and vc turbo and then that power moonroof is going to be optional on some of the other trim levels but dual zoom climate control for the sl and vc turbo you got to find some wood trim for the sl wireless phone charger for the sl vc turbo and then optional on the sr but in terms of our interior quality that we have on our s i will say just in front of the shifter you got rubberized storage instead of the wireless phone charger which is fine you can still put your phone there auxiliary port usb charging port 12 volt power outlet in front of there to the right of the shifter you got dual cup holders and within the center armrest actually a decent amount of space in there so good bit in there but there's a lot of hard plastics hey for example to the right of the shifter it's a matte black plastic a lot of matte black plastic on the doors as well including the actual door handle itself so i would imagine the other trims uh definitely have upgraded that a little bit but overall everything's kind of on the basic side but that's to be expected in an s trim level but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here a seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the s that's what you guys are looking at eight inch color touchscreen display for the sv sr and sl and then a massive 12.3 inch color touchscreen display for the vc turbo which is actually what i had last year the srv turbo but bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay of course wireless android auto apple carplay for the sl and vc turbo trims factory navigation system if you wanted that for the sl and vc turbo again you could check out some driving statistics up there if you wanted to and uh, of course your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them you're going to find six speakers for the s sv and sr trims and then a nine speaker bose sound system for the sl 
L and VC turbo. So I had an Infiniti G35 coupe back in the day with the Bose sound system. It did never fail me. So that was a wonderful sound system. I still remember that. But having said that, we do got the six speaker with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. This one does sound like a six speaker sound system. I'm gonna be honest there. If you like music, definitely go with the Bose, but this one sounds like it would be a really good podcast sound system or uh, just listening to YouTube videos in the background or something like that. But yeah, it sounds like six speakers. It's okay. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Ultima in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level across the board. And then if you were to go with the SL or VC turbo, that's also gonna give you a 360 degree monitor as well, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision warning autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert reverse automatic braking and rear parking sensors then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ultima excellent safety also love that the all-wheel drive availability is here because like i said a lot of sedans will give you that like the honda accord for example just off the top of my head that one only comes with front wheel drive so wanted to mention that but full digital gauges would be nice that's uh it's kind of a basic looking gauge cluster here and i know nissan could do it they do it on a lot of their other vehicles right now so i think uh whenever they decide to redo the ultima i think a full digital gauge cluster would certainly be nice and ambient lighting specifically multicolor ambient lighting would be nice as well and um i i would say something about the interior quality but it is the base trim level here in our s so i guess it's to be expected but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new ultima in the comment section below that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.